When I first started Youth Dive so many years ago, I never thought that I was going to be making this video. Growing up with good priests, cat kists, and Catholic role models around me, I just assumed that that was how the rest of the Catholic world operated. I never assumed that there were people out there in the world who didn't have access to the kind of resources and the kind of training that I had. I just assumed that if you were Catholic, then you were learning about the Catholic faith. That was until I started working with different people and clergymen in the Catholic Church. Then I realized that there are people who are not even exposed to Catholic teaching at all. They're in a Catholic church. They listen to Catholic priests every Sunday. They have gone through catechism for their first Holy Communion and even confirmation. And they don't know the basics of Catholic theology. And this problem is largely due to the kind of priest that we have in the church today. A priest generally has four responsibilities. And if any one of these is lacking, then the people in his congregation will suffer for it. The first one is to profess the word of God. It is the duty of the priest to tell the people what God wants them to do. These are the commandments of God as we understand them from sacred scripture and apostolic tradition. A priest is not there to make you feel good about yourself. He's not there to encourage you to pursue your goals and chase after your dreams. Even though a priest can be there for you as a friend because he's a human being after all, it is the duty of a priest to be the voice of God to you, to tell you and make it clear to you what God requires of you. In many churches today, however, the priests have become glorified motivational speakers, social workers, and stand-up comedians. They go up in front of the people on Sunday and all they have are words of encouragement, random quotes about kindness and niceness, and jokes to liven the hearts of people and make them happy on Sunday. But year in, year out, hundreds and even thousands of Catholics go to the same church every Sunday and they don't receive any message for the salvation of their souls. These Catholics then feel like they have to go to some other spiritual source that is going to help fill up their spiritual needs. We have Catholics, for instance, that practice yoga and witchcraft and believe in ancient African religions. They also use horoscopes and believe in karma and the universe. All of this is just because the spiritual aspect of their human development is largely neglected by the priest. Because the priest is incapable of helping them grow spiritually by teaching them the word of God and helping them develop faith in God, they try to use all these false religions and practices to fill up that gap in their soul. Unfortunately, some Christians and Catholics even go as far as converting to other religions, denying and denouncing Christianity entirely. And even though these Catholics bear the sin, because everybody is completely responsible for his actions, you have to realize that the priests also share in the sin of these Catholics because they are not doing what they are called and ordained to do. This brings us to the second responsibility of a priest. A priest is supposed to be a shepherd of the flock. A shepherd is someone who guides the sheep and prevents any harm from coming to them. Therefore, a priest, like Jesus Christ the Good Shepherd, is meant to guide the people and prevent them from experiencing any harm. A priest is supposed to pray for the people guide them back to the path of truth when he sees that they are going astray and defend them from heretics, false prophets, and the agents of darkness. In the world today, however, we see that priests are more interested in having meetings, going to see politicians and businessmen, taking long vacations, and allowing anybody to have access to the people of God. There's one particularly disturbing story that I heard from a seminarian in Texas, that a certain man who was the head of the church council committee was currently on his third or fourth wife. In other words, a Catholic, someone who is still receiving communion in that church, had divorced at least two women and openly talked about it to the people of the church, and he was the head of the committee that decides what happens in the day-to-day -day of the church's affairs. That a person who had broken the sacred and lifelong vow of holy matrimony, not once, but at least twice, and possibly even three times, was allowed to not only remain a communicator, in the Catholic Church, but was also put as the head of the church council committee. How is it possible for the Catholic priest in that community to preach about faithfulness and covenant and love and marriage as is taught in the Catholic Church when he has somebody like that as the head of the church council committee? 
We also have stories about Catholic priests who let just about anybody come to the front of the church and get onto the sanctuary and teach the people of God during mass, during the time for homily, random stuff about modernism and woke ideologies. There are catechists who are teaching catechism who don't even know what the Eucharist is. They do not even believe that the bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ. There are catechists in different Catholic parishes teaching the people of God who they themselves have not gone for confession in over five years. They don't even believe that it is necessary for a Catholic to go for confession in order to get rid of his mortal sins. If the priest is too distracted by frivolities, all of these agents and negative messages enter into the church and destroy the souls of the people of God. The third responsibility of a priest, and we are getting to the more serious ones now, the ones that we actually need the priests for is to administer the sacraments. The sacraments of baptism, Holy Eucharist, confirmation, reconciliation, and so on and so forth. But today we have a lot of priests that not only neglect their duties to the people of God, but also actively discourage them from seeking the sacraments. In many parishes, for example, it is very difficult to find a priest to hear your confession. There are no published confession times and priests are unwilling to hear confessions before and after mass. There used to be a time where you could walk up to literally any priest in any part of the world at any time of the day and ask him for confession and he would hear your confession. Today, it is probably easier to get a hold of a government official or the managing director of a multinational company than to get a priest to spend five minutes with you and hear your confession. And even when these priests manage to offer the sacraments, they do it with so much liturgical abuse that sometimes the sacrament is rendered invalid. There are priests who complete the sacrament of reconciliation without saying the words of absolution, for example, or without giving penance. They're just mindlessly trying to get through the entire stuff. Which brings us to the fourth and most important responsibility of a priest, to offer the sacrifice of the mass. The main function of a Catholic priest is to give the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the people of God. That is his most important role. Nothing else a priest does even comes close to the celebration of Holy Mass. And yet it is during the sacrifice of Mass every Sunday that we have the most liturgical abuse. If you pick up the Code of Canon Law, the General Instruction of the Roman Missal and the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and you read what the Mass is supposed to be and look like, and you go and attend the Mass in most Catholic churches today, what you will experience in church is almost completely different from what it is supposed to be. The Mass that is celebrated in most parishes today is closer to a Protestant service or a public speaker's conference than it is to what was handed to us by the Apostles priests insert whatever they like and take out whatever they want. The congregation adds whatever it likes and takes out whatever it wants. There's so much liturgical abuse and desecration that you start to wonder whether the priests themselves actually believe in the mysteries that they are celebrating. Now, there are generally two approaches that we can take. We can either say, oh, woe is me. The priests are being ridiculous. The church is not what I remember. Everything is just going to hell and raise your hand and you give up. Or option B, you can decide to take this matter personally, like I've done. This channel, which started as just a hobby and a way for me to share the things that I was learning in the Catholic Church, is now going to be used as my service to God and to His Church. I want to share our most sacred faith with people who are unfortunate enough to be in parishes where the priests are all but completely useless. In parishes where they have clown masses and they occasionally use juice instead of wine for children masses. Parishes where the priest homily is completely devoid of any spiritual teaching and where his entertainment value is less than what you would get at a cheap comedy club. Parishes with slothful and perverse clergymen who indulge whatever vices they have. 
praying on weak and innocent women and children. This Youth Dive Catholic Ministry is going to teach you everything you need to know about the Catholic faith, how to develop and use your spiritual powers and gifts, and how to be a soldier for Christ in this fallen world. My goal is to extend the Great Commission of Christ to you so that you will be salt and light wherever you are throughout the world that you will have trust in the mercy and saving power of God, giving salvation to your soul. And through your words and actions, you'll be able to make disciples of the people around you, teaching them to obey everything that you have learned about Christ. So if this is something that you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on any of the content that we create on this channel. And I'll see you in the next video.